Okay, so we're on to physics now. So our first topic is energy for the home. So that's topic A. So there's a couple terms we need to make sure that we're really clear about. Um, and temperature is one of those. So when we're talking about temperature, we're just saying that temperature is a measure of how hot or cold an object is. So it's just purely about how many degrees C or degrees Fahrenheit, if you want to be American, uh, but where it is on that scale. Now, on an atomic scale, so if we zoomed in, that would be telling us how much kinetic energy the atoms have. So when we then want to talk about it in terms of heat, we'd say that energies that have are objects that have more heat have more energy. Objects that have less heat have less kinetic energy. When we're talking about temperature, we're talking about how many degrees it is, so how hot or cold it is. When we then talk about how much heat it has, we're talking about how much energy it has. Now the two things are linked, but they are slightly different, so you just need to make sure that you're careful about how you're using the words heat and temperature. So as I said, with heat we're talking about the amount of energy. And heat, like all types of energy, is measured in joules, so that's capital J. And as a general rule, heat moves um, from hot places to cold places. So hot things have a lot of heat energy, cold things don't, which is why the heat goes from the hot to the cold. And the bigger the difference the temperature is, the faster the heat will move. So if something is really, really hot and you stick it in the freezer, it'll get cold quicker than if you put it in the fridge. That's why um, boiling water freezes faster than cool water. Nice little factoid for you there. So, uh, thermograms. These are one of those things that we need to just know about because the exam board quite like them. Um, and they are pictures that use colour to represent temperature. So white or red is hot, yellow is a fairly average uh, temperature, and blue is cold. Uh, so pretty simple as that. So there we go. Picture of a dog. Um, so you can see there's a lot of heat around its face and its arms and on its front legs, but most of its body is a lot cooler, so it's not losing heat from its main body. So... What we need to be able to do is calculate how much energy it takes to change something's temperature. And that depends on three things. It depends on the mass of the object, what the object is made of, so the type of material it is, and how much you want to change the temperature by. So to do that, we have an equation. Yay! It's physics. We've got to have equations. They're awesome. So the way we calculate the amount of energy is we do the mass in kilograms times a magic number that's just called the specific heat capacity. It's just a specific property depending on the different material of the object. Um, you'd always be given that. And then you multiply that by the change in temperature. So that's mass by specific heat capacity times change in temperature. And you'll always be given this equation and you'll be give, always be given the numbers. You just got to, you might maybe have to calculate the change in temperature and then plug that into the equation. But it's pretty straightforward really. Generally, it's telling you that the bigger something is, the more energy it takes to change it. And the more you want to change the temperature, the more energy it takes. And uh, the specific heat capacity as well. You know it's easier to heat some things than others, really. I mean, water, for instance, it's really hard to change its energy, its temperature, sorry. You've got to put a lot of energy in to make water boil. Whereas um, other things, like alcohol, burns a lot more easily. It doesn't take as much energy, so it's a lot easier. Right, so... Basically, all we're saying is that if we want to change the temperature of an object, we need to move the energy around. So if we want to make it hotter, we need to increase its energy. If we want to make it cooler, it's got to lose energy. So when we plot how temperature changes against time, so if I was heating something pretty evenly, um, and I'm just changing its temperature, then um, if I record that on there, we can see what's going on. I'm just going to get my pen out. So in this section here... I've got a solid, so you can imagine that I've got a cube of ice and I'm just heating it up. And I'm constantly putting heat in, but once it hits the melting point here, so it's turning into a liquid, at this point, its temperature stops increasing. Even though I'm still putting energy in, the temperature stops increasing, and that's because it's going from a solid to a liquid. Once it's all changed to a liquid, it starts, its temperature starts increasing. So in this section here, it's all liquid and the temperature's increasing again. I then hit the boiling point here. So now it's stopped increasing temperature again. And that's because it's changing from a liquid to a gas. So that energy that I'm putting in 
it can either increase the temperature or it can change the state. So both those things take energy and it can only do one at a time. So with this one, it heats it up first, changes the state, heats it up, changes the state, heats it up again. So when we're talking about putting energy in, that's why we've got to be really careful about the way we talk about it. Because for the whole thing here, I'm increasing its heat, but I'm only increasing its temperature in these three sections here. That got a bit busy, didn't it? Okay, hope that makes sense. We'll have another look at these in class. see if I can manage to uh, change slide. There we go. Let's go back to an hour again. Right. Okay, so what's happening to the energy? As we said, the energy can only do one thing. It can either increase the temperature or change the state. So while a substance is changing state, its temperature remains constant. So energy, it's like a man, it can only do one thing at a time. Horribly sexist of me, but maybe you'll remember it. Okay, so when we think about how much energy is needed to change state, we need to think about a few things. So again, the mass, again, the substance that it's made of, and finally, what state it's changing between, because it's easier to change for, between some states than others. So it takes a different amount of energy. So again, we've got another equation. So what we do is we do the uh, energy equals the mass times the specific latent heat. Now, specific latent heat is just a special number. Um, it means uh, it's telling you that for a specific material, how much energy do you need to put it in to change it from a liquid to a solid? And that would just be one number. Now for the same material, there would be a different number from going to liquid to gas. And then if I had a different material again, that would have a different number for each of those two things. Again, you will always be given these numbers, you just need to plug them into the equation. This is aimed more at the higher than the uh, foundation paper as well, so don't panic if you've not quite got that around your head. It basically boils down to picking out a number and sticking it into the equation. Okay, so that is the end of uh, P1A. I hope it wasn't too terrifying. I'm going to teach you all to love physics, I promise. It is awesome. Okay, enjoy.